Okay, hi guys, and welcome to the show. Today, I'm finally getting to review my darling little Stover. This is the 36 millimeter uh, Marine Classic. And as you can probably tell by the shells and the little boat, um, this has quite a, a interesting story behind it, which we'll get into in just a moment. So I unboxed it, a, I think about a month or so ago, uh, a little bit unfair because it was slightly overshadowed by the Adimapi Gay Royal Oak. I also unboxed in the same video. Yeah, it happened to arrive at the same time. I'd ordered this directly from Stover. You can only buy it directly from Stover. Uh, wonderful kind of bespoke service that they provide and we'll get into all the nitty-gritty in just a moment I, I should quickly do a wristwatch check before I forget and um, it become apparent why I chose to wear my little Adam RP yeah, this is my other one the, the, with the enamel dial unfortunately the moon has disappeared behind that um, bosom cut display window there at the six o'clock but usually there's the, the moon phase there. As you can probably tell, I'm starting to go in a bit of a dress watch direction. There's just something about dress watch. It's funny how our tastes change. You know, traditionally I'm more of a sports watch guy, but, um, uh, and I think it all goes back to this. And I've, this is why I'm including my grandfather's Charles Frodsham. There we go. Blued hands. Uh, very, very classic. This is an English watchmaker, the longest continuous maker of marine chronometers in the world um so this is my family heirloom piece you can see the, the the line the family crest on the back but anyway um we'll come back to this because it's all pretty much related you can you can start to see a little bit of a uh, a preference uh, a pattern evolving Roman numerals the rest of it now before we get into discussing this watch we really need to understand a little bit of history about uh, marine chronometers, deck watches, and the history of Stover, or Stover, I should say, and what led to this interesting design. Without further ado, let's change perspectives to give this watch some context. For sailors, accurate time at sea is critical. Because one hour corresponds to 15 degrees of longitude, a navigator with an accurate timepiece can work out exactly where he is. And that makes the difference between sailing safely past hazards and not knowing what lurks beneath the surface. Today, if you want accurate time pretty much anywhere in the world, you can get it. Even at at sea, you can rely on a decent quartz watch. And with modern sailing GPS systems, there's no need for an accurate watch. Navigating in the pre-GPS world though, accuracy was the difference between life and death. Now, if you're familiar with the incredible book or film, Longitude, you will know of the following story of British innovation. For men aboard the British warships HMS Eagle Association, HMS Romney and HMS Firebrand, the lack of accurate marine time meant their ships foundered and sank in October 1707. 2,000 men lost their lives, partly due to a vicious storm, but critically because of poor marine timekeeping, which led them to believe that they were in safe waters. In fact, they blindly ran into rocks. So obviously the need for accurate timekeeping was acute. And so the British Parliament, under the 1714 Longitude Act, offered a reward of 20,000 pounds, which is equivalent to two point eight million pounds in 2018 to anybody who could solve this issue. The problem was famously solved by John Harrison, a self-educated English carpenter and clockmaker who invented the marine chronometer. Harrison's solution revolutionized navigation and greatly increased the safety of long-distance sea travel. In 1730, Harrison presented the first design and then worked many years on improving it while making several advances in timekeeping technology. Harrison gained the support of the Longitude Board in building and testing his designs. Towards the end of his life, he received recognition and the reward from Parliament. Harrison subsequently became 39th in a 2002 public poll of the top 100 greatest Britons. 
These early marine chronometers were much heavier and sturdier to survive life at sea and critically were more accurate than ordinary pocket watches. Until the 1940s, they were the most accurate pocket watches in the world and very much the tool watches of their day. Unsurprisingly, they were made to be as water resistant as possible. The last thing you want in the middle of a storm is your main navigation devices failing because it got a bit damp. But let's not forget, this was way before the water resistant casing and invention of professional dive watches in the first half of the 20th century. There are many of these chronometers in museums um, to this day, and a lot of them are superbly well preserved mainly because they were obsessively taken care of by the captain or the master of the vessel. They seldom endured the knocks and bashes that saw off other watches, and often they were fitted with gimbaled, shock-protected wooden cases to further increase the chance of survival at sea. And we must not forget that this was cutting-edge technology for the time, and the quest for accuracy was far more challenging for watchmakers than producing complications like calendars, moon phases and chronographs. But finally from Harrison's work in the early 18th century, it put the Royal Navy at even more of an advantage and undoubtedly assisted its dominance as a world power simultaneously. England continued leading the world in watchmaking. This was very much the golden age with the likes of John Arnold, Larkham Kendall, Mudge, Charles Frodsham, Thomas Earnshaw, and so on, just to name a few. With the inevitable miniaturization of movements and the advancements in the development of this technology, the deck watch took over. These watches were very simple, far more portable, and extremely accurate with a lever escapement, incidentally invented by Thomas Mudge back in 1750. But differing to the marine chronometers that most often had a detent escapement. Interestingly, one of my ancestors, the infamous Fletcher Christian, who led the mutiny on the bounty, used the ship's K2, which was made by Larkham Kendall, uh, when he took over the bounty and used it to good purpose because he found with its aid that Pitcan Island was incorrectly charted so he would be safe there, able to avoid the Royal Navy. Rather bizarrely, cousins of mine, or Fletcher's descendants, still live on that extremely remote island to this day. The K2 itself was an exact copy of Harrison's H4 marine chronometer and was a successor to the famous K1, which was the chronometer supplied to Captain Cook on his historic voyages. However, navigating battleships proved a little bit more challenging. The chronometer movement was delicate and the concussion of firing big guns would make the detent escapement jump. So chronometers were stowed far below and the deck watch was introduced. These were set referencing the main chronometer on the ship and then used up on deck, hence the name, or on the bridge for navigation, for example. The very, very best deck watches were handmade in England and in the years running up to World War I were supplied by the Admiralty who submitted them to the Royal Observatory at Kew for testing in a tradition started by George III. The Admiralty found that deck watches were also better than chronometers for smaller ships, which like yachts have a more violent motion and get chucked about. So they supplied them to destroyers and smaller vessels. With the increasing affordability of watches, deck watches became commonplace, not only militarily, but also for commercial sailing, private yachts, and sport. The development of radio time signals in the early 20th century meant that the deck watches could be used in place of the chronometers, and so the era of the marine chronometer came to an end, and eventually only the deck watches remained right up until the 1960s with the inevitable quartz crisis of course, becoming ultimately obsolete. But let's rewind a bit. How does Stover fit into all of this? Well, it did not take long for the rest of the world to catch up during the 18th and 19th century. With the collapse of the English watchmaking industry in favour for Swiss imports, soon every seafaring nation was developing their own marine chronometers. They still remain, to this day, perhaps the best bargains to buy, with fantastic examples from around the world, from brands like Hamilton, Ulysses Nardin, Mercer, Zenith, 
the list is endless, and as you can imagine, with the constant need and importance of timekeeping at sea, especially in the pre-GPS and radar world, the sheer magnitude of deck watches just exploded, not only in demand, but also in supply. So just like any great nation, Germany needed deck watches too. Stover, as we've discussed and reviewed many times, is an amazingly important and historic German brand. They are a manufacturer of high quality wristwatches based in Engels brand. Their name is a portmanteau of the founder's name, Storz Volta. Stover is now owned by Jörg Schauer, who took over the uh, company following the founder's passing away. Originally, they were based in Pforzheim, Germany, which as we've discussed before, is world renowned for jewelry and watchmaking. However, due to the destruction of their factory in the Second World War, they relocated to the Black Forest, uh, where they currently have a factory along with a museum. They were founded in 1927. Their most well-known watches are the Fliegers they made as part of the Big Five for the German Air Force in World War II. Uh, previous to that, they had the Antia line, which were Bauhaus inspired, very minimalist, as far back as 1938. In 1963, they introduced the prototype for the present day Sea Time collection, which was a dive watch and we have reviewed uh, exactly a year ago now. The Marine watches are based on deck watches that Stover produced in 1939. They also produced watches during the war for the Kriegsmarine. You can still find some of these examples on the used market. In 2002, uh, George Schauer decided to reintroduce a modern incarnation, originally with a Unitas 6425, uh, and I believe it was limited to only 100. Manual wines operating uh, at a slower vibrations an hour with a subsidiary dial. In 2005, they introduced the first automatic version with the 2824, along with a rose gold uh, limited edition to honor the Fort Time heritage, which as I'm sure a lot of you are aware, Fort Time is sometimes called the gold city. 2013, they introduced the chronograph, which went on to win an award. Again, we saw it's very clean aesthetic with a uni compacts layout, blued hands, uh, unmistakably deck watch inspired and then finally here we are today so let's get on with the review let's discuss the basic specifications we'll start off with the dimensions this is a 36 millimeter version you can buy i think it's is it 40 millimeters or 41 i forget but have a look on the website it's just a smidgen under 11 millimeters tall lug to lug we're looking at 44 millimeters and then the lug width is 18 so yeah this is the perfect size for me i mean undoubtedly i, ha I had to go for the smaller one beyond actually the choice of sizes and complications because i chose the date version obviously you can even choose uh, there's there's a version with small seconds arabic or roman numerals you can choose an automatic or a manual wind i went for the manual wind i just adore seeing that movement this is the top grade eta caliber 2804-2 which operates at 28,800 vibrations an hour it has a 42 hour power reserve 17 joules obviously it's manual wind but if i pull out the crown to the uh, first position it's no screw down crown you can see we have quick set and if i pull it out all the way let's just do that you see it's hackable so essentially the 2804-2, it's basically a 2824 just without the rotor. And I, I wanted to have no rotor really so I could enjoy that beautiful movement. Now it isn't COSC certified, it's the top grade, but I have to say accuracy wise, it's astonishing. It's operating far within COSC not even a plus one a day. I don't know if Stover actually regulate these or what they do precisely, because they don't state on the website. Maybe it's just luck of the draw. However, I have heard from across the board from, from a lot of Stover buyers uh, that they are 
you know, impeccable performers. And this certainly does not disappoint. So the whole case is stainless steel in a high polish. The crystal is sapphire and it's curved on the front and then flat for the exhibition case back. The movement is actually decorated. We've got blued screws, Cote de Genève striping, although I, I believe in Germany it's called something else. And we have Stover written there, the engraving filled in with gold paint. Uh, lovely little touch. Now, you can even get some of these wheels customized as well. I didn't go in for that because I was trying to keep it under budget. And also, just in case I didn't like it, I'm not sure if somebody's willing to buy a watch that has parts of the movement inscribed. However, it is possible to do that. I mean, that's fantastic customization. I've never actually ever seen, apart from really high-end horturology, if you remember my videos in, in Switzerland. So the dial, unfortunately, it's not enamel. It does give rather a lovely kind of impression of that it's almost enamel. However, it doesn't have that same richness, um, that crisp white, the way that enamel ages is just unmistakable. I went for Romans, obviously, because I'm a you know, I love the classicism and elegance of Romans. And also, as you saw in the history, um, it's a lovely little nod to the British origins of the marine chronometers. Amazing maritime legacy. I mean, being a Brit, you know, I used to go all the time as a child to um, Greenwich. And uh, I'll never forget going on the Catisark and the Maritime Museum and the Royal Observatory. It's, it's an integral part of... You know, and, and I'm linked to it as well because of Fletcher Christian and um, to a certain extent my my grandfather's Charles Frodsham um, who has a, a long illustrious history of making um, maritime chronometers more than any other brand in the world. So still going. Anyway, so the hands are thermally blued and they're very classic poire style as you see on the hour hand. The minute hand is very traditional uh, Mercer-esque. Very similar to a leaf style hand but it's a double. It gets skinnier towards the middle and then is almost as if two leaf style hands together. Very simple minutes, no Luminova, nothing like that. Although, interestingly, some of the Kriegsmarine uh, Stover deck watches did have luminous dials. The date window is a very subtle trapezium shape, which I love that. It, and also it's symmetrically placed at the six o'clock. It's the only thing that breaks the Roman printed markers that are in extremely accurate and precise uh, black print. We get that classic rail track around the outside. Again, I mean, the classism, if, if we look at my, my grandfather's Charles Fordham, it's it's just so indicative of that, uh, of that age, you know. Uh, I, I love it, I really do. Stove is written in kind of off gray. It's hardly noticeable. Uh, it's a very subtle detail, uh, but I do appreciate that. And I love how they've added a little triangle at the 12, um, just to give it some orientation. Those blue hands are wonderful. I mean, they really have a, a richness that is unmistakably achieved with real thermal bluing. The crown is a very ergonomic uh, onion crown. Uh, again, if we look at, look at my almost unchanged from the 18th century, ergonomically, it's wonderful. I mean, it's a real pleasure to wind. It becomes kind of a ritual. So anyway, let's, let's pop it on the wrist and see how it wears. So there we go. Now, on my six and a quarter inch wrist, it wears perfectly well. The lugs are quite wide, so I have to say it wears a little bit larger. I would say almost like a 38, to be honest. However, the angle of the lugs does point nicely downwards. It sits on the wrist very confidently. I've put it on this bench uh, made uh, vintage strap just to give it a little bit more pizzazz. I have to say, however, the strap it came on was fantastic, really soft and supple. But since putting it on this one, I, I haven't looked back. Also, I don't wear this on a NATO strap because simply I want to enjoy that movement um, with the NATO strap. It kind of covers it up. It's also very leisurable. The weight is about 55 grams, um, which makes it extremely comfortable. Great everyday watch. 
There is a, a beautiful elegance about it. It certainly looks like quality. It feels like quality, especially one on the wrist. Uh, it's unmistakably a well-made piece. I love the, 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 the fit. I, I would have loved the lugs just to be a, a smidgen smaller, perhaps. But anyway, uh, that kind of nicely brings us on to uh, positives and negatives. So let's discuss the positives first. Well, obviously, it goes without saying that uh, the level of customization, um, the choice you have, um, it's just fantastic. In fact, it would make a wonderful gift. I think there's nothing more classy than having something custom made to your specifications. If you want to hand something special down to the next generation, a little bit like my grandfather's pocket watch here, it just reminds us of, of, our, of our family, what we have to live up to. So that is something a special quality and I haven't really seen it in the mid range. We've seen it with the undone watches at, at the affordable quartz uh, entry level and we've seen it you know, if you see my video of Beauvais and, and, you know, super, super extreme high end, their factory in the castle <laughs> in Switzerland, it's quite extraordinary. Anyway, so it's nice that there's somebody offering it exclusively um, at this level. The performance is impeccable. We mustn't neglect to mention that the ETA, it's very affordable to maintain, rock solid. I mean, that all those cliches, what, what's the biggest cliche they use? Um, the, the workhorse movements, there we go. The quality is exceptional. I mean, this is of a luxury standard, the polishing, the, the attention to it, it's just amazing. I mean, I'm really impressed to think that it was under $800. I think about uh, the total was around $700. Amazing value. I was just completely astonished. But that's the modesty and, and humbleness of Stolver. They're not greedy like that. They know their place. It's unpretentious. It's a classical design. It's never going to go out of fashion. It's something that's going to transcend the generations. Very tastefully done. The name, Marine Classic, it says it all. I also love the connection to history. Obviously, for me, this aesthetic, I mean, it defines classicism in watches. It, it does it for me. I love it. Uh, we always band about this phrase, tool watches. Well, uh, this is the definitive original tool watch. You can never accuse this of being bad taste. I also love the feeling of adventure. I know this sounds a little bit, perhaps this is getting pretentious, but I love that it evokes that that age of discovery and exploration. Uh, I look at this and, you know, I think of Captain Cook and, and uh, my ancestors and it's it's wonderful. Very clever for Stolver to, to bring this into a dress watch direction. And also I love the fact that you can dress it down a bit with the, uh, the uh, this, this dress strap on a lizard strap or a croc strap. It would look the kipper knickers. I mean, it would function perfectly as a dress watch. It has that elegance, undoubtedly pure class. I mean, do I even have to say it? So let's discuss the negatives. Well, I would have loved, and this is really nitpicking. If you see the Stover logo there, I would have loved it to be just under the 12, to be completely symmetrical and to uh, really complement the line of symmetry running down the center of the watch. Very, very minor nitpick, but um, I think it, you know, I think it should be mentioned. We should really address the water resistance. Obviously, being manual wind without a screw down crown, it's, as we see on the on the um, the back, it's only five atm, fifty meters. Now there was a lot of misunderstanding, especially when I posted it. I think on Instagram, and I had like ships and stuff in the background, and people didn't really get why a nautical watch would have such a low water resistance. Well, guys, we've got to remember this was before dive watches. This is from an age where, you know, it was water resistance was very rudimentary to cut a long story short. This was before the oyster cases and the, uh, you know, the sea masters and all the rest of it. So it's forgivable. Of course, yes, it would be great if it was a little bit more, but 50 meters is absolutely fine. Uh, obviously don't go swimming in it, but this has translated into a dress watch for the modern age with a with the stylistic hint rather than a, a serious ocean going watch you wear this to the office not going on a captain cook style voyage for example uh, then that's when you grab the the skx or the or you know the squire or whatever i would have loved to see a real enamel dial perhaps uh, just to really give it that sense of authenticity i would be willing to pay even um, you know quite 
to be honest, double the price. Because if you have seen my Swiss videos, you know that enamel dials, they, it takes tremendous skill and time, um, a bit like blued hands, an art in itself. But the end result is this wonderful kind of cream off-white luster that is unmistakable. Anyway, um, and actually probably better exemplified by my little AP if this thing will ever focus. There we go. Uh, just, l just look at that kind of porcelain quality it has. It would be lovely to see a high-end version of that. And actually talking to high-end, I wouldn't mind even seeing a gold version. I know they did do a limited edition, uh, but again, I'd be willing to pay even more to have uh, it really become a true dress watch in a precious metal. I'd, I would adore that simply adore it i love its understated nature perhaps going gold it, maybe that's a little bit too extravagant my biggest gripe really is the case now from my understanding and i could be completely wrong forgive me if i am and correct me if i am wrong but the case is the same one used in the automatic and you can see a little bit of excess space there uh, where the rotor would have been I think had this been even slimmer, maybe, you know, nine millimeters, perhaps, it would have just elevated its its um, under the cuff dress watch appeal to that next level. But again, very minor thing. It still wears tremendously well, regardless. Oh, and actually that reminds me one last thing. I would have loved just to see made in Germany at the six o'clock instead of having it engraved on the back as you see there they should be proud of this they really should so just to be clear uh, this took about four weeks um, they stated on the website it takes about three weeks from when you uh, submit your order and pay online I also appreciate the fact that uh, and I was discussing with another fellow gentry uh, Stover owner um, that he wanted the whole case bead blasted. He, he went for the Arabic dial with bead blasted case. They didn't offer it on the website, but sure enough, he emailed them and they actually did a special bead blasted case just for him, which I think is fantastic. Just demonstrates that attentive willingness to, to really satisfy the owner's needs. Anyway, guys, I'm going to leave it there. I don't want to rabbit on too much with endless mellifluous praise but it really is a cracking cracking watch i can't recommend it enough and i'm happy it worked out because it, yet again it's something in a in a very accessible price range that will please a lot of people and i can really stand by this recommendation thank you very very much for watching please don't forget to like this video if you enjoyed it and found it useful and as always thank you so much for watching and i will catch you in the next one okay guys ciao this is a public service reminder for the good gentry. Please follow us on Instagram, join the Facebook UGWC group and click on the bell to keep notified of new videos. Don't forget to keep it positive, keep it gentry, onwards and upwards. Thank you.